Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in to Chapter 13. Today we're going to cover annuities, sinking funds, annuity dues, uh, ordinary annuities. Um, I, I don't want you to get scared by the term annuity. You actually deal with these on a daily basis. But before we get to that, let's look at the terms. Uh, some terms that you need to know are um, kind of up here, annuity, future value of annuity, present value of annuity, your annuity is certain, which are your ordinary and your ordin uh, annuity due, as well as sinking funds. So when we say what is an annuity, well, it's a, a frequent payment or deposit to get a series of payments back or deposits back. And so, so what we're going to focus on is you actually get one of these on a daily basis, actually depending on the period, you get these on a regular basis. So an ordinary annuity is a deposit or a payment made at the end of the period, such as a salary. So if you get paid or if you get a paycheck, maybe that's every two weeks, maybe that's every month, where you work and then you get paid at the end. Um, and, and here's a, a nice little graph just to help you understand, okay, well I have to work this entire time, then I get paid. And I work and then I get paid. Well, what's interesting is um, it starts at the end of the period. So there's a couple ways to calculate it. You can either use the lookup table or you can use the value uh, or the, the formula. And we got quite a few emails saying, hey, you know, in, in chapter 12, the book didn't have everything we needed in periods wise or a half percent. Well, I assumed, and, and I shouldn't do that, but I assumed that you also had the handbook. And in the handbook, it, it basically has a percent takes up the whole page. So this is 2%, and, and I got my periods all the way down from 1 to 50. And then going across the top, I've got my future value from chapter 12. I've got my present value in chapter 12 as well, so the first two columns. Well, then we go into the, the values of the ordinary annuities, then you got your present values, and then you have your sinking funds. And so what, you, what we're going to do is look at our periods and go over and find the value that we need. But it's by page. So two and a half, three, three and a half. So this handbook will be very helpful for the test as well as for your homework. Uh, but let's, let's do a problem. Let's actually do the extra practice problem on page 322. So we actually kind of understand how this works. Um, and it says, and I've got it, and we'll come down to write. Uh, it says that we are supposed to use table 13 or 0.1 to find the value of an investment after four years on an ordinary annuity of $5,000 made semi-annually at 4%. So I've got four years at $5,000 at 4.5%. Well, since it's semi-annually, I know my period is now going to be 8, and my interest is going to be 2. So if I turn to page in my handbook to 2%, and I look up period 8 and table 13.1 and I find out that that's 8.5829. Well, then I multiply that by 5,000 because that's our payment each semi-annually, which gets us $42,914. Okay, well, what happens if I use the formula? Well, I use these same periods and same percentage here, so I've got... My payment times 1 plus interest, so I got my payment 5,000 times 1.02 to the 8th power minus 1 divided by 2%. And then I multiply that. This actually is this number, 8.5829. So this is the exact same thing. So the, this book was created by doing this formula and then plugging it into a, a little cheat sheet chart for you students, which is kind of nice. So that's how we do an ordinary annuity. Let's take a look at annuity due. So our annuity due is a regular depositor payment at the beginning of the month. So if you look and see, we're actually starting at the beginning, and we get, if you kind of break this up into segments, we actually get three more segments of interest compounded onto it, if it was a three year or three period compared to the previous one because it started at one. So just get one, two, three periods. Well, this gets an additional one, two, three. So it gets six periods of interest growing. And the formula is over here as well. A little bit different what you have to do with the, the table, uh, the lookup table, is you have to add one period to your initial periods and then subtract out 
one payment. So let's let's do a practice so we understand what's going on. So I'm going to turn to 322. I'm going to do 1B and get out the way so you can see. Now recalculate that previous question assuming annuity due. So previously we had four years, $5,000 payment, we had semi-annual at 4%. So this is going to equal 8 plus my extra period. So plus 1 equals, so I'm going to look up period 9, and I'm going to look up interest rate 2%. So I'm going to go to 2%, period 9 and over, and that equals 9.7546. We'll multiply that by 5,000. And I'm going to get 48,773. And then remember, I must subtract my one payment. So minus 5,000. So this annuity due is actually 43,773. Now, could I do it through the formula? Yeah, I could plug them in and have it work out. Um, here you just do the straight formula again. Actually, I can do that after I do number two. Let's move on into the practice problem. It says Wally Beaver won the lottery and will receive a check for $2,500 at the beginning. So you can tell this question since it says at the beginning, my flag goes up and I say, yeah, that is going to be an annuity due. It's at the beginning of each six months for the next six years. So if I got semi-annually, because it's 6 months divided by 12, so I'm looking at semi-annually, and then I've got 6 years, so I'm looking at 12 periods, 6% interest annually, how much we have at the end of 6 years? So 6% divided by 2 for my semi-annually, so I'm going to be 3%. Well, am I done since this is a new way to do? No, I actually have to add one. So my period is equal to 12 plus 1, which is 13. And my interest is 3%. So I'm going to turn to page 3% in the book and look up in the chart 13. That gives me 15 point six one seven eight okay I'm going to multiply that by the 2500 plug that into my calculator I'm going to get thirty nine thousand forty four dollars and fifty cents I'm going to subtract one payment of twenty five hundred Well, I have a resulting number of 36,544.50. So that's how I calculate my annuity dues, by using the lookup table. Um, I can do it again by plugging into the formula. My payment's going to be either, depending on which problem, 5,000 plus 1 to the interest of 3% and my, my rate of in, and then I actually divide by my interest rate, and then I multiply by 1 plus my interest rate to get um, my total. Now what happens, at least in the previous chapter we did the future value, and then we also do the present value. So what do we need to invest today to receive a, uh, basically a streamline of payments at a future value for a future amount of time, so X amount of years. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up our number of periods and our, our rate by calculating it how we have, semi-annually, quarterly, um, and we're going to times it by the factor that we get in the book. It's also known as table 13.2. Uh, there's also a, a formula, so if you don't have the book, you can use the formula. Depending on what you find and what you like, you can use either or. Um, preferences is up to you. So, but there is a, a, a way to do it if you don't have the book. So let's look at extra practice quiz number 300 on page 325, and we're going to just do one, two, and three. 
So as I turn there, we see, because we're doing 325, 13-2A, what must you invest today to receive a $20,000 annuity for five years semi-annually at a 5% annual rate? All withdrawals will be made at the end of each period. So at the end of each period signifies that we're going to do annuity due. So I've got $20,000 that I desire at the end of each semi-annual period. So I've got five years times two equals ten periods. I've got an interest rate of 5% annually. So I'm going to look up and see what my factor is in the book. So I go to 5%. I'm now going to look at the present value, which is table 13.2, 10 periods. I've got a... Interest rate of divided by 2 is 5, 2.5%. I'm actually going to turn to 2.5% page. Sorry about that. I didn't do my math. Um, 10 gets me a factor of 8.75 to 1. Now I'm going to multiply that by my 20,000. When I put that into the calculator, I'm going to get... A hundred and seventy-five thousand forty-two dollars is required today to be able to take out twenty thousand dollars for five years. The next question is number two. If we want to set up a scholarship fund to provide five thirteen thousand or three thousand dollars scholarships for the next ten years. Invested at 4% annually. How much should the scholarship committee invest today? Well, we want five $3,000 scholarships. So we want five or $15,000. And it says annually. It also says um, 10 years. 4% annual rate, so 4% and 10 periods. So I'm going to turn over to 4%, go to 10 periods, and I get 8.1109. I'm going to multiply that by the 15,000, and it gets to be 121,663. 50. Number three says, John decided to retire in five years in Arizona. So in five years, John will retire. What should he invest today so he can withdraw $80,000 at the end of of each year for 30 years after he retires. Assume he can invest at 3% compounded annually. So he's going to retire and he's going to get $80,000 for 30 years. We're assuming 3% annual interest. Now that's, that's going to be quite a bit. So what do we do? Well first we have to figure out the present value of the annuity and then we'll have to figure out the present value of that. So what we do is we take the 80,000 and we're going to times it by our factor that we get from 30 periods, 3% interest. So I'm going to look in here, turn to 3% interest, go look at 30, all the way down here, and it's a factor of 19.006. Times 80,000. Well, that gets us, after I do that in the calculator, $1,568,000.
$32. But that is not the present value. That's in five years. So we can actually don't have to pay as much. So let's do the uh, basically the present value of this five periods. So we have five years. So we have five periods at 3% interest. So I'm going to look it up in my chart. So we're st still right there on that same page. And basically the present value is 0.8626. So I just have to multiply this by 0.8626. So he doesn't have to invest one and a half million. He only has to invest 1.3 Five two five eight four point four. So $1,352,584.40 is 40 cents is what he has to invest so he can withdraw $80,000 for 30 years. Which seems like a pretty good deal, but I don't have $1.3 million. So, might have to keep on working. The last section uh, is on sinking funds, and this is from going with bonds or city or municipalities can do this, or if you know, um, basically an arrangement where you have a periodic set of payments um, for a particular amount of money. And so what it is is your sinking fund payment is equal to the future value times our table of 13.3. Um, the factor there. So what we can do is we can turn to 326 and do that problem and then we'll be done. So it says um, Arrow Company issued bonds that will mature to a value of $90,000 in 10 years and they're setting up a sinking fund. Interest rates are 12% semi-annually and it says what do we need to set aside to meet the obligations in 10 years? So semi-annually, 10 years, so we got 20 periods. Uh, we also have, we want $90,000. And the last thing was 12%. Uh, so 12% divided by 2 equals 6%. So I can look up in my handbook. 6%, 20 periods, to get my factor, which I'm going to multiply by 90,000. So 20 periods, I'm in my third table, which 0 0.0272 times 90,000. You can do that in the calculator. And I get... Twenty-four hundred forty-eight, I do believe. Yes. So, don't be scared by chapter thirteen um, by being able to get kind of friendly with your handbook and paying attention to what terms they say, be it uh, beginning or end of the period or present value or what's a future value. You'll know what to look up in the handbook. If you have any questions, feel free to hop on the online exam or the online review tomorrow night. Um, and as a heads up, the exam will have four true/false questions from chapters 10, 12, and 13, and nine work them out questions um, for each of those chapters as well. So 40 questions, and it'll be open after the review tomorrow night. Okay, thanks. Take care.